my name is Dr. Douglas Street and I want to welcome you to the third episode of the series Achieving Optimal Health. Today we want to look at inflammation and what it means to us in, in individually. Now, what is inflammation? Inflammation is a term often used by doctors that unfortunately many persons don't understand. It is actually a product of your immune system. Your immune system is like an army and armies usually are for protection. Now, when the army is called to action, it goes into warlike con conditions. And the processes that are, that are involved in, in this are usually destructive because armies, the purpose of an army is to seek, kill and destroy. Now, our immune system is just like that. But unfortunately, when it is activated, the actions that, that, that it takes can be harmful to, to the body and these actions are what we refer to as inflammation. Inflammation causes a lot of different problems inside of the body. They cause damage to the body tissues. They cause interference, interference to, to the body's functions and it also interferes with, with the healing process. Inflammation for example causes the damage that, that, the, that we called arthritis. When you have inflammation in your joints over a long period of time, it can cause arthritis. Eczema is another example of inflammation and gastritis. These are all examples of inflammation causing damage to the body tissues. It also causes it interference with the, with, with the body functions, especially the hormonal function. Now the hormones are responsible for many different functions in the body. These include the menstrual cycle in women, reproduction, the energy level, sleeping, the strength of the bones, and also um, the, the, um, the, 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 the processes involved in controlling your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your pulse rate, all of these are controlled by, by hormones inside the body. Now, as I mentioned before, inflammation can affect the function of these hormones so therefore when inflammation is high over a long period of time you can have an effect on, 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 these, on, on these processes an example inflammation can affect the action of insulin in the body and when you have long-term inflammation in, in the body it can actually cause insulin not to work very well especially those persons who have diabetes in their family who have diabetes in, in their genes Inflammation can actually cause the insulin not to work very well and then the sugar can go up, which can lead eventually to diabetes. Hormones are also responsible for, for maintaining the, the blood pressure. So long-term inflammation in your blood vessels can eventually lead to hypertension. Your, your pulse rate is also controlled by hormones and, and therefore these, these can be, be negatively impacted by inflammation as well. The strength of the bones is also impacted by hormones and inflammation affecting the hormones that, that, uh, that regulate the, 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 the calcium usage in the bones can lead to the bones getting weak leading to osteoporosis. So inflammation is what causes all of these processes to, to develop inside the body so it's actually very important. Inflammation also interferes with healing. When inflammation is high it, it distorts the healing process. An example of this would be um, keloids, when you have inf high inflammation inside the body and you get a cut on your skin, you can get keloids as a result. So you can have the healing process being distorted by inflammation inside the body. So it's very important to understand the role that inflammation plays inside of, of the body and the damage that it can cause. Now what causes inflammation to develop inside of, of the body? There are several things that, that can cause this. These include allergic reactions, especially if a person has a chronic allergy, such as allergic rhinitis. This can produce inflammation inside the body, which goes right through the body. And that is why some persons, when they have a flare up of, of their allergies, their nasal allergies, they may notice that the stomach starts affecting them because the inflammation produced by the allergies can affect the stomach. Um, so, and you find they can also get joint pains when you have, sometimes some persons will have a flavor of the sinuses 
and then they start getting back pains. This is because inflammation produced by the allergies can, can affect the joints causing joint pains. Another factor which, which influences inflammation inside the body is the, what we call the intestinal microbiome. This is a community of bacteria that lives inside the intestines. When you have an imbalance of the bacteria in your intestines, because most of your immune system, in fact, between 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is in your intestines, an imbalance of the bacteria can cause the, the um, immune system to produce excessive amounts of inflammation, and then this can lead to um, the, the problems that we spoke about earlier. Inadequate sleep, lack of exercise, and also foods that we mentioned before, mentioned in the previous presentation, can cause inflammation to develop inside the body. So it's very important to understand the causes of inflammation, the effects that it has, and and what what is what it what you can do to, to reduce it. We're going to be looking now at how to reduce inflammation in the body. Now it's very important to understand why we should reduce inflammation inside the body. Inflammation is actually behind the development of the chronic illnesses such as diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, osteoporosis, etc. So it's very important to understand that reducing inflammation can help you to prevent these illnesses from, from, from developing and also can prevent some of the complications of these conditions. So that is a very important source of inflammation. Foods that are absorbed quickly into your, into your, your, your bloodstream can increase inflammation inside the body. Also, there are certain foods that, 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 can, that can increase inflammation inside the body, such as dairy products, shellfish, and animal-based foods. Fried foods also increase inflammation inside the body, and processed foods also increase inflammation inside the body. So we have to ensure that we restrict the amount of these foods that we have, because they can increase risk of these chronic illnesses that we mentioned before. Foods that reduce it include unprocessed plant-based foods. These, these are um, fruits, vegetables, peas and beans, nuts, seeds, whole grains, other foods like green bananas, sweet potatoes, brown provisions also. Wheat products, even though some of them might be whole grains, they, do, they can increase inflammation inside the body. So persons who have chronic illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, etc., would do well to restrict the amount of wheat products that they have. This is because gluten increases inflammation inside the body, so you should really reduce the amount of wheat products that you have when you have a chronic illness. Vegetable juices are quite good in reducing inflammation. A good combination would be, for example, 80% vegetables and 20% fruits. These can reduce um, inflammation inside the body. Also, the, the pattern of eating that we have, eating heavier in the mornings and lighter as the day progresses, can also help reduce inflammation inside the body. So it's not it's about what you have, the timing that you eat, that you have it is also important. Allergies and allergic type reactions are also an important source of inflammation inside the body. These include some certain food, food allergies, nasal allergies, even um, the, um, the, 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 there are certain, certain environmental you know, factors that might increase in inflammation inside the body. So it's very important to understand um, that allergies actually play a very important role in inflammation. There are certain environmental factors that can increase inflammation inside the body as well. These include air refreshers and also um, strong fragrances such as perfumes. UV light also increases inflammation inside the body, so it's best to try and avoid the sunlight during certain hours of the day. Um, so between hours of 10 a.m. and 4, 4 p.m., the sunlight during this time is, is um, likely to produce inflammation inside the body, so you should try and avoid it as much as possible during, during this time. Cleaning chemicals is another very strong source of inflammation, such things like bleach and disinfectants can also increase, in, increase inflammation inside the body. The microbiome, as, as we mentioned before, can increase inflammation inside the body if it's not balanced. How we can improve that is by having probiotics, pre-prebiotics, getting enough rest and exercise. This can improve, improve the balance of, of, um, of, the, of the microbiome. 
and it can reduce inflammation inside the body. Other measures include getting adequate fresh air, drinking about 8 glasses of water per day, having a healthy belief system in a faith-based in, in um, faith, faith group, and the food detox also can help to reduce inflammation. So these are some of the measures that you can do to you can use to, to reduce inflammation inside the bodies. And as I mentioned before, it can help to control the chronic illnesses and even prevent. So it's a very important thing to understand and, and implement. Thank you for, for listening. We'll see you again soon.